In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we God, Amen. So the first time the Lord Jesus Christ confirms the basics and the foundation of the relationship between man and God. <clears throat> he confirmed it today that for someone to build his spiritual life with God and to earn eternity, all what he has to do is two things. Just to love God and to love people. And as I said, it's not the first time that God lays this foundation. St. Matthew also recorded an instant when the Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. The great and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend. It's the foundation. It's the base. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. You know, when we lay down the foundation for building, the whole building depends on that foundation. If the foundation is weak, no matter how great the building is, how big or small, built with good material or bad material, one day the building, the whole building will collapse. For one simple reason, the foundation was weak. But if we build a good, solid foundation for any building, as the Bible teaches us, Time will come when tornadoes will come, hurricanes will come, rain will come, water, wind, all kinds of tribulations, all kinds of difficulties. It may hit that building, but the building will stay there. Why? Because the foundation was built on the rock, not on the sand. And the rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is God. And God is love. So simply our foundation is love. Unless we build our spirituality on love, everything we do is in vain. Fasting, prayers, uh, doing anything right in our lives would be so in vain unless it's built on that very strong foundation, the foundation of love. Love is the first fruit of our relationship with God. The very first fruit. If I claim that I have a relationship with God, people have to see this fruit, the fruit of love. St. John tells us in chapter 13, verse 34, and you command and I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling us this at St. John documented in his gospel. And you command and I give to you the Lord Jesus Christ saying that you love one another as I loved you, that you also love one another. I love you so much, the Lord says, and that as I loved you, you shall, you should also love one another. And listen to this. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. By this, by loving one another, by this, all will know that you are my disciples. All will know that you are Christians. People will not know you are Christians just because you are wearing a cross. It becomes a fashion now, unfortunately. Many people wear it just as jewelry, not just because they are Christians. People will know that you are Christians not because you are wearing a cross. Not because your name is Mark or John. Not because you go to church. Not because you talk about Christ. Not because you claim that you're a Christian. People will know that you're a Christian. People will know that you are God's disciple when we love one another. By this, all, everybody, will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love is a confirmation for all of us that we are alive in Christ. Love is a sign of life. 
If we love, that means we are alive. The Bible says so. Again, St. John is telling us in his first epistle, chapter 3, we know that we have passed from death to life. We were dead and now we are alive. And we confirm, and there's a sign that we were dead and now we are alive. People will know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brother. It's a sign of being alive. People who don't love are dead people. Yeah, they can walk around, go to work, make money, eat, drink, whatever, but they're dead. Because their heart is dead. Because that's what makes someone alive. Does he have a living heart or his heart is dead? When someone doesn't know how to love, his heart is dead. But how do people know? How would we know that we are alive when we love the brethren? And the Lord made it clear that we ought to love our neighbors. And I like the English translation in this particular verse because the Arabic one sometimes confuses people. The Arabic translation is Qaribak. And in, uh, in common Arabic, we consider the word Qaribak uh, as your relative, relatives. But the English translation doesn't say love your relatives. It says love your neighbor. The original Arabic word for Qaribak reflects anyone who is Qarib Manak, nearby, in the neighborhood, in the vicinity. And that's their actual meaning for it. Just because in, in like uh, slang language, in Egypt, we say the word Qaribak as relatives, like cousins, uh, parents, children. But that's not the real Arabic meaning for it. The word Arabic meaning, Qaribak, means anyone who is nearby, who is close by. The English word is more accurate. In the neighborhood, your neighbor, someone who's in the neighborhood. And here in Canada, we know, we know that uh, when we live in a neighborhood, this neighborhood has all kinds of people. Especially here in Canada, we're a multicultural uh, country, so your neighbor from the side is Chinese, while the other one is Italian, the back are someone from Africa, and uh, like all kinds of people around your neighborhood. We all know that. And that's a beautiful concept when we think of love your neighbor. Love your neighbor means what? Well, love all the continents. People who live anywhere, from anywhere on earth. Because if you look at your neighbor, you will find a representation for every single nationality in the world. So here you go. Love every single nationality in the world. Love everyone in the world. Because they're all your neighbors. All are your neighbors. In the old days, it was more or less the same thing. The neighborhood, because people did not travel much. So they had a community, a village or something. So that's the neighborhood. So when God gives the commandment to love people who live in the neighborhood, for that time, means love everyone, simply. Because you don't, more or less, many people uh, live and die without seeing anyone outside the community that they're living in anyways. So here you go, God's telling you, love everybody in your neighborhood. Love everybody in your village. And now, commandments wider because the whole world has become a small village nowadays. Love everybody in the world. Love your neighbor, everyone. When we love, we look like Christ. We become like Christ. Because St. Paul in his epistles to Ephesians, he says, Therefore, be imitators. So imitate who? Be imitators of God. Imitate God. Because God loves everyone. God is love. So be imitators of God. St. Paul is telling you, when you love you, you look like God. When you love him, but you look at you and see God in you. Reflect God in you. How? How can I reflect God in you? You reflect the God in you by showing love. When people see the love in you, people see the love in your eyes. We see uh, the love in your acts, your deeds, your actions and reactions. They will glorify God who is in heaven because they will see you 
as an imitator of God. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children who are the children of God. And normally children look like their parents. So, and also children imitate their parents. So therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Live in love. Walk in love. When you walk in love, you become an, you become an imitator of God as dear children. As Christ also has loved us, given himself for us, and offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. God loved us so much that he sacrificed himself for us. Do that. Sacrifice yourself for one another. Love one another. And when you love one another, you become an imitator of your heavenly father. Love your neighbor. Wasn't only a commandment in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, the Lord Jesus Christ quoted the Old Testament when he mentioned love your neighbor. So it is a commandment in the New Testament and a commandment in the Old Testament as well. From the old days when God gave the commandments to Moses, he told him to tell his people to love your neighbor. And when you love your neighbor, all the other commandments will be fulfilled. You can't love your neighbor and steal from him, can you? Of course you can't. So the commandment, do not steal, will be fulfilled when you, love, when you love your neighbor. You can't love your neighbor and covet him. You can't love your neighbor and, uh, and not make peace with him. You can't love your neighbor and envy him. So we we'll find that all the commandments when it comes to your relationship with your neighbor will be fulfilled easily when we love our neighbors. Not only our neighbors, the good ones, but even the enemies. And again, this is not only a commandment in the New Testament. It was given in the Old Testament as well. In the Old Testament, God tells us to love our enemies. Listen to this. In the book of Exodus, when God was giving commandments to his people, the Israelites, he tells them, if you meet your enemies, ox, so if you are walking around the wilderness, walking around the fields, and you see an ox or a donkey that belongs to your neighbor, if you see your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, what would you do? This animal belongs to your enemy. Oh, it's a good opportunity to take revenge on your enemy. You can take his ox away or kill his donkey. No. The Bible teaches us in the book of Acts, chapter 23. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. What? He's my enemy. I bring it back to him. He might pick a fight with me. Uh, like, I, I can't do that. No, you should do that. Because God hopes, God hopes that when you bring the ox or the donkey to your enemy, and instead of being an enemy, you may gain a friend, actually. So you kill the enemy, not by a, a sword, not by a gun. You kill your enemy by doing good to him. Then, you don't only kill the enemy, you kill the enemy and you gain a friend as well. Imagine in the old days, oxes and donkeys had great value in the old days. For someone, uh, uh, probably all his possessions, simply a donkey and an ox. And he went astray, so simply he lost everything. And now, his own enemy is bringing his ox back to him, or his donkey back to him. Of course, the love will start to flourish here, and anything will be gone. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You should help, not your enemy, help the donkey of your enemy. This is something. 
God is amazing. Look at this. If you see a donkey who is carrying a heavy burden, and this donkey belongs to your enemy, help the donkey. Help. Have compassion in your heart to the donkey who belongs to your enemy. And I said, in old days, donkeys had great value. So when you have a donkey, you have your neighbor as well. Refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with your enemy. You go and help your enemy to rescue his dog. That's in the Old Testament. So love your enemy is not something that's strange to us. It's something God asked us to do from the old days. It was a commandment in the Old Testament. And of course, it's a commandment in the New Testament. The Lord Jesus Christ said, according to the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who stiffly use you. Love one another, love your neighbor. Love is a wonderful language that we ought to use in our daily life. But love means that we do good to others. Love in the Bible is not defined as merely emotion. Someone has an emotion towards someone. Now, emotion is the least important thing in love. Love is manifested by deeds, by actions. That's how God loved us. When God loved us, He did not send us love letters saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. When God loved us, He sent His only begotten Son to save us. He did something about it. God loved us so much, then He found us going astray. He found us perishing. He found us dying. He found us under the burden of the sentence of death. He didn't just say, oh, I love you. It's so bad that you're going through this difficult time. He didn't just do that. He did something about our burdens. Did something about our sentence. By what? By dying for us. By carrying our burden. By carrying the sentence of death on our behalf. That's real love. Real love is to do something to others. Not just to look at them with compassion but and say, well, yeah, too bad. We love them so much, but too bad. We cannot help them there. Do something for your loved ones. And do the right thing for your loved ones. Many people love or they claim that they love. As a matter of fact, the word love is probably the most overused word in the whole universe. All songs go around. Love or movies go around. Love, all books, novels, stories. Like the word love is used all of the time. But unfortunately, it's, it's been misused. It's been misused by giving the wrong impression about love. Showing love just uh, like an emotion. But what real love is all about? Real love is about helping others, feeling for others, doing good things to others. By this, we know love. St. John is telling us. How do we know the real love? St. John is telling us in his first epistle, chapter 3. By this, we know love. Because we laid down, because he laid down his life for us. God laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods, and sees his brother in need, sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? How does the love of God abide in you if you claim that you love God, yet your heart is shut up, shut down from helping one another? But that's how we know love, when we help one another. He continues, St. John, the Apostle of Love, he continues saying, my little children, that's not love in words or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's love indeed, in word, not in 
times or words. When we love people around us, we need to show them Christ. Show them Christ. Show them the light of Christ. I wonder when, uh, when two people claim that they love one another, and unfortunately their relationship leads them away from God. That's not love. You can call it anything but love. If they love one another, they will bring one another closer to Christ. They will help one another growing in their spirituality. That's real love. When someone talks to me and says, well, I'm in love with this person, they okay, what's the outcome of this relationship? Well, the outcome of this relationship that you stop coming to church. Maybe this person is not even Christian, so don't call it love, please. Call it anything else but love. When you love one another, you bring one another to Christ. You improve the spirituality of one another. If we love people around us, we will reflect the light of Christ to them. So they will see us and they will see the light of Christ. And when they see the light of Christ, they get attracted to Christ. Then, that's a sign of our love to them. That we attracted them to Christ. But when people see our deeds that don't reflect the light of Christ, they are pushed away from Christ. So we can't claim that we love them. When there is a, a friend who's attracting you to do wrongdoings or wrong things, don't tell me that he loves you. Because he led you to do wrong things. He led you to uh, go to wrong places and do wrong things. And be not very, do not very good things and uh, inappropriate things. Then this person cannot claim that he loves you because he pushed you away from Christ. When we love one another, we apply the golden rule. We all know the golden rule. What the golden rule is, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. That's a golden rule. So before I do anything to anybody, I think, is it how I want people to deal with me? Is it how I want people to talk to me? Is it how I want people to um, deal with me. If yes, so it's the right thing to do to others. If you think of uh, stealing something from anyone, or lying to anyone, or talking behind somebody's back, or um, uh, cheating on someone, or uh, uh, like telling about someone, backstabbing, all of this, think. Is that how you want people to do to you? You want people to backstab you, or you want people to talk about you behind your back, or you want people to uh, uh, cheat on you, or you want people to steal from you, or you want people to talk bad about you? Of course not. But if it's not, uh, don't do it then. If you love them, don't do it. Just do what you want them to do to you. If you love one another, be a peacemaker. Be like your Heavenly Father, a peacemaker. Because St. Paul tells us in the book of Hebrew, pursue peace with all the people. Pursue peace with all people. Peacemakers are loving people. If you love one another, try to be a peacemaker with one another. When we make peace, we resemble our Heavenly Father. Reconcile with one another. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there on the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. And only then God will accept your gift in the altar. How many of us would come to church and with all good conscience would take communion and pray and think we're saints? Yet we have that much hatred to someone, a relative, a neighbor, a friend, or a partner at work. I resent this person because he took some business from me. I resent that person because he's my partner and we cannot reconcile our books. With this resentment in my heart, how can I dare to come closer 
the blood and the body of God in communion. And worse than that, that I look from a distance, pointing to others and say, how come those people go and take communion? And they are causing that much trouble with me. Well, how about you? Don't you cause that much trouble with people as well? It takes two to have a problem. All it takes two to have a problem. If I have a problem with someone, the problem is within me more than within him or her. So reconcile with one another. That's a sign of love. That's a foundation. If we are building spirituality, if we are building our big structure, we ought to make sure that our foundation is very solid first. And this foundation, to be solid, has to be the foundation of love, as I mentioned earlier. And this foundation of love cannot happen unless I reconcile with people whom I have problems with. Love means don't judge others. If I love someone, I will never judge them. Because love, love puts something between me and other people's mistakes to cover their mistakes. Love covers other people's mistakes. Love does not allow me to see their shortfalls and their problems and their mistakes. So as a result, I don't judge them. Of course, when we love one another, we open our Bible and we read the epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the first epistle, chapter 13, the very famous chapter of the Bible of love, Corinthians, for, uh, first Corinthians chapter 13. Go and read this chapter. Apply every single word in it to your life and weigh your life. Let's do this when we go home today. Let's go and read. When St. Paul tells us, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in truth. Bearing all things. Believing all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. I think this chapter as my standard of love and before I even utter the words I love this person, take this chapter, apply it to your relationship and see if you really indeed love this person. Before we claim that we have love in our hearts, let's weigh our love on this scale and see the weight of my love can actually can I actually apply those words to my relationships with others or no? If yes, that means I really have love in my heart. If no, I have a big job to do. I have a, a cracked foundation that I need to correct and glory be to God forever.